There is the battle of illiteracy and poor education in South Sudan. It is said that less than 17% of the teachers are trained. In South Sudan, if you can pass grade eight, you are probably qualified to teach at least up until grade six, or maybe grade seven. So we do programs that work with teacher training. We have a teacher training college that goes for three years, but we also do short-term trainings for those who are already teaching, teaching them how they can present material and how they can understand the lessons that they are to be teaching. We have a program called Peace Economy that fights the battles of hunger and malnutrition. In this program, in the area where I work, about 10 years ago they introduced ox plows. This is new technology for South Sudan. And many people now can cultivate more land than they could before and raise more food to help feed their families. We also work with helping them get new varieties of seed that will grow and is more resistant to drought or introduce different varieties of vegetables. We have a radio program that helps fight the problem of illiteracy and the lack of education, doing health education, teacher education, and just general messages across the radio. We have a program called Church Development, which helps bring the people, do education for pastors, does theological education by extension, and also works with communities, sending facilitators in to help work with the community, do Bible studies with them, and help them learn how they can take responsibility for their own community and getting the things that their community needs, like a school or a clinic. We also help in fighting the battle against a lack of health and medical care for the people of South Sudan. It is said by WHO, the World Health Organization, that in South Sudan, one child dies every eight seconds from malaria. That means that in the one hour that we are in this church service, more than 400 children will die from malaria, a disease that is easily preventable and curable. This past rainy season in South Sudan was a particularly difficult year in terms of malaria. In our small clinic that has 20 beds, for most of the season, we had over 80 patients admitted. Once the beds were filled, we had a large tree, a mango tree on the compound, and we had patients lying under the tree with their IV drips hanging down from the limbs of the tree. When that tree became full, we moved to a tree outside the compound where patients also would lie, getting their IV drips for the malaria. South Sudan also has the distinction of having the highest maternal mortality rate in all the world. According to UNICEF, a girl in South Sudan is more likely to die in childbirth or in pregnancy-related illnesses than she is to complete grade eight which says two things, the maternal care available is very poor, and also the education system, especially for girls, needs to be improved. The very first year that I was in South Sudan, living in our um, community in Adol, around 10 o'clock at night, we had two men come on a motorcycle, and they came asking me for permission for our land cruiser and driver to go to their village to pick up a woman who had been in labor all day. 
They said now they discovered that the baby was a breech presentation. The baby was upside down. The mother had one of the baby's foot, feet hanging out. And they said they were going to bring her to the clinic on the motorcycle, but she refused to get on the motorcycle. So though it was against our policy to have our vehicles on the road at night, because they were going further into the bush and not along the main road, we sent the driver and one of our staff to pick her up. As they were turning back, they had to stop alongside the road, get the woman out of the land cruiser so she could deliver a healthy little baby boy. They got her back into the land cruiser and brought her to the clinic. About 20 minutes later, they discovered there was a second baby. Okay. This baby had died. The following day, we were talking with the father of this baby. He was an educated man for this area. He had taken teacher training classes at our school, at our compound, and he had also received some health education messages. So we said to him, why? Why did you not send her for prenatal care? And he looked at me totally astounded, and he said, well, during her first pregnancy, I sent her. Do I have to do this every time she's pregnant? So there is a lot of room for improved education and health awareness in this nation.